Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you've been using Lightroom's new generative AI remove tool, you probably found that most often it works great, but there are some situations where it will give unexpected results. Well, since it's been released, I've been experimenting with it quite a bit, and I've read some things that Adobe has written about it. I think I figured out the best way to use the new generative AI remove tool under certain situations. In today's video, I'm going to share that with you. Now, the first situation is you would have an image that just has sensor spots on it, or in the case of this image, just water drops on the lens. The best way to use this tool is to use it as it used to work. That is, turn off generative AI, turn off object aware. When you do the, do, the tool will operate like it used to before generative AI was introduced to it. And all you need to do then is get a brush that is big enough. And in the case of the sensor spots, I want to remove them completely. So I'm going to make sure opacity is at 100 and just click on the sensor spots and they'll be removed as easy as that. Now, specifically what the tool is doing when you use it like this is it will just look at area around where you're painting and use pixels from there to replace the pixels you want removed. So it's not sending the image up to Adobe servers. It's not using any other type of reference image. It's just using your image all by itself to remove whatever you want removed. And for many things, this will work fine. And it's the fastest way to use the tool. You can see that you can just click and click and click and it goes pretty quickly. You could get through all these water drops pretty fast. Now, there are those situations where things might not be so simple. For example, I have this image of this lady and she's walking, and let's just say I wanted to remove her from the image. Well, if I try to use the tool as it used to work without generative AI and without object aware, I could try it. But again, it's not going to use any other image as a reference, and it's not going to use any AI technology. It's just going to look around her and use pixels around her to replace what she is covering up. So in this case, I would paint around her like this. Now I still have, as you can see over there, I have generative AI off and I have object aware off. So I need to paint, because object aware is off, I need to paint her completely. Like I can't leave the middle not painted and let object aware take care of it. I have to paint everything. So bear with me a moment. So I'll paint her completely, let go. And now it's not sending the image up to Adobe servers. It's doing everything locally. And at first blush, maybe, oh, it looks kind of good. But when you look a little closer, you can see that the bricks are messed up. There's some weird haloing around where her head was. Uh, so it had to come up with something to put behind her. And it just used things that were around her. And you can see how these three lights that are kind of repeated are repeated here. Specifically, these three lights are repeated. So it's not the best way to use this tool to remove a person that is kind of stand in, standing isolated in an image. Let me reset this. The best way to do this is with generative AI on, and you could try object aware as well. And for those of you not familiar of, of my previous videos where I talk about object aware, this really helps you when you're painting because you really don't have to paint the entire object. If it recognizes the object, it will automatically adjust and refine your mask so that it will then be on the object perfectly. So in this case, I don't have to paint the middle part of the woman. It automatically filled that in, and you could see that it improved the mask so that it is just on the woman. Now, I could modify it with the mask refinement if I need to, but I do not need to do that, so I'll just click Apply. Now, it is actually sending the image up to Adobe servers, and Adobe servers uh, is using AI, and it's using millions of other images that it ever referenced, to replace the woman. You can see, actually, it looks pretty good. Also, you have variations. Uh, so this is one variation. And if you look where the woman was, if I hover, you could see the outline. Uh, we're behind her. It had to come up with this tree. And you notice that tree doesn't look like any other tree. So that was totally invented by Adobe servers. If I go to another variation, it added a dog there. And a third variation, it added a different tree, and the building in the back looked different in all three as well. I think the first one looks best. If neither of those three or none of those three look good, you can click refresh and it will send it up to Adobe servers again and try again and give you three different, um, you know, um, 
outputs to, to look at. Now, where it gets a little more complicated is where you have something like this. Uh, we have two people, and I want to remove one of the people. Now, what makes it a little easier, you might think, is the background um, looks you know, good. It's kind of like a just nothing complicated about the background, so it should make it easier. So uh, let's just try it with the old tool. So we'll take generative AI and object to wear off. And we'll go, I want to remove the man, let's say. Okay, so I'm going to very carefully paint around the man. And you're thinking, well, this could work because there's enough pixels maybe of that background behind him to replace him in the image. And then the little bit I'm catching of the woman's sleeve, there's some pixels from her it could use to fix her sleeve. And you think this might work, right? So we'll come down here and we've got to get everything like this and like this. Because I don't have object to wear on, I have to paint completely. Now, again, it's not going to send this up to Adobe servers at all. It's just going to use my computer to do this replacement. And it's analyzing. It might take a little longer because I painted a lot more pixels here compared to those sensor spots. But what you'll find is for something that's more complicated like this, it's going to fail every single time. And you can see it did. It just didn't know where to take the pixels from. It took some pixels from the background, but obviously took some pixels from the woman. And when you use the tool in this manner without generative AI on, it's not going to give you any variations. So we just have this one um, variation to choose from. So obviously it failed miserably. So let's uh, reset this. And let's now try it like I did the previous image. I hit generative AI on and object to wear on. So we could get in paint on the man and it should refine our mass because object to wear is on so that it's just on the man. And even if it didn't, we do have the opportunity to refine it further. But let's try that. And you can see it didn't get all of him. So we'll come in here and refine it further. Like this. So we'll get in here. We got to get his leg over here. Get over here. And here. And we can let go and get a larger brush. And get a right break key. So this happens sometimes. But more or less, that's a pretty good mask. It has the shape of the man uh, defined pretty well. We'll click Apply. Now, again, it's going to go up to Adobe servers, and it's going to come back with something. And I can guarantee it's not going to look good, because what happens is when you use it with object aware, or when you paint around something, and it kind of still looks like the outline of what that thing was, in this case, a person, it's going to replace that person with another person. So you can see every single time now there's another, oh man, that's scary. It's, it put another person in the image. So this isn't the best way to utilize this tool. The best way to do this when you have a person in the image and you can't, you have to use generative AI to get rid of the person, is when you mask the person, make sure your mask doesn't resemble the shape of the person. Because it uses the shape of the mask to determine what to put in there. So if the shape of the mask look like, looks like a person, it's going to put a person in there. So we don't want that. So we're going to turn object to wear off. We're going to leave generative AI on. We're going to get a larger brush. And then what we're going to do is now I got to kind of do it in all one thing. So we're going to come here. And we're going to just kind of put a rectangle around him more, more or less. And we are going to be a little more careful around her arm where the woman's arm is and go like this. So we'll go like this. So we have this rectangle around him. So it doesn't really look like the shape of a person. Now, most often, you do something like this. This will work a lot better. Now, we could come in and modify the mask. Maybe I want to subtract and try to get less of her arm in there as part of the mask. So we can make this smaller and come in here and just try to pull it away from her arm a little bit. And then maybe apply it and see what happens. Now, again, it is because generative AI was checked. Object aware wasn't checked, but generative AI was checked. It is going up to Adobe servers and it is doing something there. Now, in testing this, it almost always works great. Usually with the three variations, it is one variation will I have something in there I don't want. But in case there, you can see it looks great. That looks good. 
in this case, that one looks good. So when that that's important. And the main thing to remember here is that when you use object aware or whenever, even if you're painting without object aware, if the mask you drew looks like an object, it's going to try to replace what is under that mask with whatever that mask looks like. So if it's in the shape of a person, it's going to try to put a person in there. Now, there are some situations where it's kind of in between. Uh, For example, we have this image here of this man and woman, and let's say you just wanted to remove them from the scene. But there are pixels behind that are a little more complicated of the um, streetcar and train and tram, if you prefer. And there's nothing in the image that it could sample to replace them. So it has to use generative AI. So you may want to try object aware first and see if this works. And with object aware, it does make it a little easier to paint because I could just go around the perimeter of them like this. And then object aware should should then select them. Okay, and it did. And you can see how it kind of conforms to the shape of the two people. And what I found is something like this. Um, it sometimes will work better this way, but sometimes works better without object to wear on. So we'll try it. So this is a situation like this is when you're going to have to try both ways. In this case here, I don't know, does this does train look okay? There's a second one. There's a third one. They all kind of look weird. Um, I... You know, you could hit refresh and try it again, but let's try uh, without object to wear on. And in this case, I'm going to get a bigger, br- a bigger brush and we're going to come in and we're going to just kind of do a rectangle around them, them. Her leg is sticking out though, which is going to cause a little bit of an issue, but that's okay. Cause we'll just grab it like right here. All right. Now we didn't get the middle, so we have to get that middle. All right. Now try it. And you still have generative AI on, so it's still going up to Adobe servers. It's still doing whatever it does there. Now we have like a quite a different looking train uh, there. We have variations, though. There's another look and another look. Of the three, I think that one probably looks okay, uh, whether or not it's actually realistic or not. I know it's not. Again, something like this, you may find it's kind of a tweener. Uh, object to wear may work. It may not work. Having object to wear off may work, it may not work. But then when you have other situations like we had with the previous image where um, it was really, uh, I hit the back key so it's generating again. There's another, that one actually looks decent. Uh, But let's go back to that previous image. When you have an image such as this where um, the two people are very close and if you do uh, put an object mask on one, it looks like a person. There's a person standing right next to that person. Generative AI is going to think you're going to want a person in there. So in that case, make sure you take object to wear off. So hopefully that made sense. And hopefully this helps you better utilize this tool. I think it's a super powerful tool and it's even more powerful when you know all the little like um, quirks of the tool and know when to best use it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.